So by now you have received your rooming assignments and as a first year student, you will live in either Miller, Slade or Trees Hall. So we recommend that you begin contacting roommates or roommate to start getting to know them. You'll also wanna coordinate who is bringing what in terms of larger items, including fridges, refrigerators, microwaves or TVs as you usually only need one of those. So listed on screen are some common residence hall items. So during your first year at Bentley, the residence halls, uh, and the bathrooms in the residence halls are actually in the hallway. So we recommend bringing shower shoes and a shower, cat a shower caddy and or toiletry bag to transport all of your toiletries to the bathroom. A lot of students also recommend getting a mattress topper as it can help make your bed more comfortable depending on your sleeping preferences. Laundry baskets and bags are also recommended as the, laundry, as the laundry rooms are usually on the ground floor of residence halls and laundry bags can make it a lot easier if you're living on the third or fourth floor. I'll help you lug all of your laundry down. Some students find that their closet isn't enough space to house all of their clothes or other things they may bring to their room. So storage, under bed storage, such as plastic bins are highly recommended as well. Surge protectors can also come in handy living in a residence hall as you and your roommates may be sharing outlets. And with all the electronics you may be bringing, it will be very helpful. So moving to a new place can be very scary. Um, I know I was really nervous when I was coming to school as a freshman. So my roommate and I, during the first couple of weeks, we actually left our door open to our room and we people came in and out and we stopped in people's rooms where doors open and helped us meet a lot of new people and make some of our best friends. Yeah, everyone's really super excited to move on campus. So during your first few weeks, just try to say hi to as many people as possible and hang out in some common rooms and areas just so you get to know as many people as you can. And something else you might not think to bring but is definitely useful are headphones and earplugs. Headphones are really great for listening to music, zoning out when you're doing your homework or just chilling in your room. And then earplugs are really great if it's noisy in your hallway or if you're trying to study in your room or in the library in the bubble or anywhere on campus and they can be definitely useful. All right, so dining. If you're going to be a residential student, you're going to have a dining hall on campus and your meal plan consists of two different parts. So one, you'll get swiped. You can either get unlimited swipes a week, 15 or 12. And this will get you access to the 921, which is our main dining hall on campus, which is breakfast, lunch, and dinner from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I'll also get you a take five from Russo's, which is an easy lunch solution for uh, people who are very busy. It includes a sandwich, bag of chips, a beverage, fruit, and a cookie. So your discretionary dollars, they can be used at any of our other dining places on campus. So like La Cava, Einstein's, ROT, Corito, and even more. Um, except Dunkin' Donuts, unfortunately. You can't use your dis discretionary dollars there, but there's many places on campus where you can. And Main Bowl and Russo's offer a late night option for meals. They're open until 1 a.m. on weeknights and 2 a.m. on weekends. My favorite place to eat is actually the Lower Cafe, also known as La Cava. It's right on upper campus, and it's a perfect opportunity to grab a sandwich in between classes or grab a quick snack. My favorite place to eat on campus is Credo. Literally almost as good as Chipotle. Great burritos and they have Nutella milkshakes. It's right in the Dana Center. And, uh, actually, I really enjoy eating at the 921, which is our main dining hall on campus. And it provides you the opportunity to be creative. So you can, there's tons of options. There's pizza, there's always a grilled chicken, there's always a salad bar. Um, Miguel's omelets are amazing. And actually, which you will be receiving, I got our new Falcon Guide for Tips for Navigating the 921. And then also for more ideas of recipes and things that you can uh, mix up in your menu. Oh, let's see. Um, okay, so academics. At Bentley, a lot of your assignments will be done electronically through our Blackboard site. The Blackboard is your academic hub where your professors can, it's an online form that they can post um, all of your classes, your syllabuses, homework assignments, handouts, announcements, and more. And it's a really good way to stay on top of your work and a great way to find additional resources that your professors can post and that the library will post as well. And then group work. Group work, you probably had group projects back in high school, but you have tons of them in college. That only knows that in the real world, you're likely, likely to be working on teams and with others, and it's great to 
um, practice that now in college. So many Bentley courses have group project elements and it's important to take it seriously and start early. Um, a lot of times your professors will have you make a team contract and it's really, really important that you take that seriously and not just kind of blow it off because it'll save you later on to get your email and phone numbers of everyone on your team and make a group me right away. And then to set a timeline to complete your task so you stay, stay on top of it. And also you ask, making sure that you are comfortable asking your professor and other group members for help along the way. Uh, and then when it comes to textbooks, uh, we recommend that you wait until your first week of classes to buy your textbooks because your professor will hand out the syllabus and then explain uh, whether you can get an electronic book, a print book, and what you need, what's recommended, and what is required. So textbooks, uh, you can find them either from the campus store or from online other uh, websites such as Amazon, Chegg, or using the correct exact ISBN. So some people may find it difficult to adjust from uh, academics during high school to college. I know I definitely did. So here are a few uh, study tips that helped me adjust. So we recommend planning ahead. I, um, your syllabus will have a schedule and your professor may not remind you of all of your deadlines. So it's important to keep tabs on due dates and prepare before you think you need to. I'm on the softball team here at Bentley, so it's really important for me to plan ahead because I never know when a practice might pop up and I have to look at my game schedule to make sure that I'll have enough time to complete all of my homework or study for exams. So we also recommend going to professor's office hours. These can be very useful as they can help you preparing for exams or if you didn't do well on an exam, they can tell you how to prepare next time. I know I definitely utilize professor's office hours during my freshman year and it really helped me transition a lot. So we also recommend in taking notes. Here at Bentley, a lot of classes may be in lecture format. And I know I like to write my notes down in a notebook. It's just easier for me to remember them. But I know a lot of my friends also like to use their computer and some professors do let you use your laptop for notes in class. So this is a big one. We really recommend using your resources. At Bentley, there are many resources to help you with your academics, including various centers such as the ACE Lab, which helps you with your accounting courses, the Writing Center, the Math Learning Center, and more. There's also tutors that are available to students, and I definitely utilize tutors, and they've helped me a lot. So some key study spots that we like to use are the library, empty classrooms, the bubble, which is the study space in the student center, other areas in the student center, study rooms, and common rooms, which are found in each residence hall. So I personally like my room, if it's quiet, the library, or even an empty classroom, as I like to work in silence, but I know a lot of people who work at tables in the student center or in common rooms, if they like a little bit chatter or background noise while they're working. Yeah, I love the bubble. I lived in the bubble last year. Um, it was right next to my residence hall. I lived in Kresge Hall, so it was really convenient, and the dining hall is in uh, the student center as well, so if I ever got hungry while studying, I could go down and grab a quick snack, and it was a really great environment for me because I worked really well where I could zone in or work in pairs. So I love studying outside. Uh, when it's nice, I'll just go outside with a couple of friends. There's plenty of places on campus to either sit or I'll lounge out in the grass. So yeah, that's my favorite. All right, so um, there is an unbelievable amount of clubs and activities on campus. So your first weekend when you get here, uh, the campus activities fair, will be held and it's the best way on campus to figure out what you want to get involved in and see existing organizations on campus. Uh, you can talk to students, you can go with your friends and sign up for anything you want. You literally can just type in your email and you'll get uh, emails from all these different clubs and all their updates. Um, we have over 100 activities on campus and if you don't find anything you like, you can always go ahead and create your own. Um, these clubs and activities usually meet during an activity period which is uh, every Wednesday from 2 to 3.20. So no one will have class during that time. So you'll have an hour and 20 minutes every week to meet with clubs. And they also do meetings and activity, activities at night if um, you're balancing multiple clubs and they're meeting at the same time. And um, at orientation, all of our orientation leaders are going to have name tags. And under the name tags, they're going to have ribbons. And these ribbons, they um, designate or kind of signify which kind of clubs they're in. So if you've seen OL, with a red and an orange name tag, that means they're involved in governance and programming clubs as well as academic organizations. And um, here on campus, I'm involved in Greek life and club golf. 
Yeah, so I'm a member of the Bentley varsity softball team, as well as the Student Alumni Leadership Council and the Bentley Chamber Orchestra. Yeah, and two things that I'm involved in are service learning, which is an academic department, but it is also student run, and then um, the Fire Steps Club. And orientation. So orientation is, well, obviously it's our favorite part because that's why we're here. Um, orientation is a great way to meet new people and to see what your community is like both inside and outside of the classroom before the rest of the upper class and move into campus. So it's your kickoff to your Bentley journey and on August 23rd, you're going to move in between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. You'll have that time depending on your residence hall um, to move in and then you will have convocation from three to four, where it's your whole class will be under the tent. The dean, our um, the provost, will kick it off, and it's the first time that you guys will all be together as a class. And then the next time you guys will all be together under the tent will be at your baccalaureate ceremony before you graduate, which is really really exciting. So your orientation group welcome will be from 4:30 to 5, and that's where you will meet your OL orientation leader. That will be your guide over the next five days and meet your orientation group, which is the group of 20 or so students that you will be journeying through your orientation with. Um, during orientation, you will have a ton of really fun activities such as um, do your world, uh, play fair, and uh, some really great motivational speakers. And then you will also be able to have some uh, administrative tasks such as your first class, your first um, general business course, laptop distribu distribution, et cetera. Um, so we're in the midst of planning an awesome orientation for you guys. You guys will get to meet a plenty of incoming students and upperclassmen while getting a feel on campus. You'll get to hear from incredible speakers, engage in experience called Dear World, and attend an open house with various campus resources. So our biggest advice is to be yourself and to take your cool hat off and just be comfortable being yourself because that's where everyone gets wants to get to know. So our few final words of, of advice are really just be sure to take care of yourself throughout the year. Moving into a new residence hall can be very stressful and uh, acclimating to Bentley can be tough, but we recommend just making sure you take care of yourself. Um, your well-being is the most important part, so make sure you take steps to stay healthy. Bentley has various resources, including the Dana Center, the Health and Wellness Center, and the Counseling Center um, that, you all sh that you should all utilize, and just make sure that you take time for yourself. Well, it's always important to have fun. Um, remember to have your priorities balanced because you're at Bentley for your education first and foremost, and your activities are great, and what you do at Bentley is completely up to you. Find stuff that you're passionate about. Make sure you have a balance between your academic life and your social life. Outside of Bentley, try to explore the local area in Boston. There is millions of things to do in Boston, and a lot of them are free. So go out and explore. Um, and we, all, we want you to enjoy your time here. Uh, you worked really hard to get here, so definitely try to make the most of it. Yeah, so thank you guys for joining us today. And we'll be here for 30 minutes. Um, so write in questions, and we'll be able to answer them. Oh, yeah, you have some questions. OK, so um, what the first question is, what are your thoughts about bringing a vacuum? So my freshman year, I did bring a vacuum. Um, my roommate and I brought in a small rug that we put on top of the rug that we brought that um, is inside of the rooms. And we're both girls and our hair actually like always ended up on the floor. So having a vacuum was very useful for us. But I know a lot of my guy friends who don't necessarily have a vacuum if they have shorter hair, um, but it's really just preference. So I like having a vacuum because I like having a clean floor. But I don't know. <laughs> Um, so to check out classrooms are free, um, the only way to check if a room is free on campus is if uh, you go on our library website and you can see if study rooms are free. But for the classrooms, um, usually at night there won't be too many classes so you can walk around and you can usually find a free classroom. It's really, it's not too difficult to find a free one. And if there's other people in there, they don't really don't mind if you're, uh, if you come and join them and study for a little bit. Uh, yeah, so the next question is, are parents required to stay for any, oh, if any part of orientation is um, no, but they are welcome to attend the welcome reception and convocation. Um, and then also, so if you're moving in on the 22nd, 
your parents can come back for a convocation, but we are also streaming it live. So if you live far away and they don't feel like coming back, you can they can watch it online. So um, our next question is about locking beds. Really easy. You can just contact our um, our housing department, our facilities, and they can come in, raise it real quick. Um, in my freshman year, I had a locked bed. It was actually pretty dope. So I definitely recommend it. Um, our next question is: um, If you're, uh, if one of your roommates is not communicating or answering their emails, um, that's okay. Sometimes people they don't check their emails as often, and uh, while it is easier to coordinate um, bringing things in the beginning, if you do answer them, if they don't, that's okay. You'll meet them when you get here, and then you can settle everything out. And four triples do still have three desks, and in each room there are full-length mirrors. Usually they're either on the side of the closet or on the back of the door. Um, this webinar is being recorded. We'll post it on our YouTube channel. We'll send out the link to you guys. So it's definitely gonna be available for you to watch it as many times as you want because I know you guys love <laughs> watching us. So. Uh, our next question is, do you suggest buying a binder for classes or one folder for each class? That's completely up to you. I know I personally like to have a binder for each class and then I like to have put filled paper in, but some people love notebooks and having a notebook and a folder. So that's definitely your preference. Um, if you did it in high school, you could do it the same way or learn a new way of taking notes and studying. So it's definitely up to you. Um, is there a fourth, fourth we still have plenty of our closet space. There'll be two closets in the room plus a wardrobe for the third person. So there's going to be an equal amount of closet space for three people. And there's plenty enough, uh, plenty of room in the bedroom for you guys and all your stuff. Um, so in force triples, it, one of the beds um, are usually bunked. It depends on the room and it depends how you and your roommates want to do it. But if they're the only reason you wouldn't have underbed storage is if your beds were bunked. So then you would coordinate with your roommate to either split half of that bunked bed or find other space um, on top of the wardrobe or um, in the closets. Yeah, I was actually in a trauma first year. Me and one of my roommates, we both split under his bed because I was on top. We both um, split the storage under his bed and we had plenty of room. Yeah, and I lived in a quad my freshman year, and the triple that was next to me, they didn't lock their beds, and they still had plenty of room because a lot of them um, put, the, put their stuff underneath each of the beds, so they had plenty of room as well. Oh, um, how and when do you find a job on campus? So you find a job on campus by going to Under My Bentley, under Student Self-Service, you click through the main menu, Student Services, and then you come to a list of a ton of different tabs and tasks that you can do. It's under SEAS, Student Employment Application System. And under that, there will be all the jobs that are listed. You can apply to any of them. Um, you can start applying I'm pretty sure you can start applying now, um, but if you wait until you get here, that's completely okay. Uh, there's a variety of jobs, such as working you know, at a desk job, uh, answering phones, or you can work for any department on campus that is offering a job. In the first couple of weeks of Bentley were very exciting. For me, it was a little nerve-wracking at first. It was a little bit hard to get adjusted, um, but in transitioning was a little tough at first, but for me, I know I just called my mom a lot and just tried to put myself out there. I'm a little shy at first, but once I really just um, threw myself into the experience, put myself out there, um, the transition was a lot easier. In terms of schoolwork, the pace is a lot different. At Bentley, the, it is, schoolwork is challenging, but as I said before, I'm on a sport and I still had time to do my homework, hang out with friends, and go to practice, so it definitely is really doable. And in terms of getting involved, at the activities fair, um, I know we all recommend just going and signing up for as many things as possible, even if you think you won't end up uh, following through or if you might not be that interested, just put your name down, get the emails and attend the first couple meetings and see what you like. And um, eventually you'll be able to find something you're passionate about as all of us have. Yeah, for me, after the transition was, it was pretty good. I was really excited to come and then for the schoolwork, I think a lot of our professors really ease us into it. So for our first GB class, your first 
big college class. First couple of weeks, we were sort of eased into the course, so I wouldn't really stress about um, worrying or stress or worrying about um, like being too hard at first. Oh, um, Jacob, you have a question. Is if you're allowed to mount a TV on the wall of the drawing room, and unfortunately, you are not allowed to do that. You can always put your TV on top of your desk, your dresser, or um, or where everyone can see it. Um, so the next question, what the chamber, what is the chamber orchestra like? So it's very small. It's only about 12 people. Um, we have violinists. We have some cellists. I actually play the flute. Um, it's a lot of fun. It meets about once a week, um, and we do two performances throughout the year, um, and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's laid back, but it's a nice way to continue to play your instrument. There are no auditions. Um, you, you just come to the first practice, and there aren't that many musicians here at Bentley anyway. So a lot of us, um, it's just a lot of really a fun organization where we can all just play our instruments. We also have a pep band here at Bentley, <laughs> and this pep band performs at our hockey games and our football games and as well as our basketball games. And that's a lot of fun too. It's really just seeing which musical organization you want to be involved in. Um, so, uh, sports, so sports, some sports do have walk-on tryouts um, and it is a lot of recruitment as well. So really we recommend reaching out to the coach because this is usually all up to the coach. Some fall sports have already started their preseason. So depending on what sport you're looking to play, we recommend going on Bentley Athletics website and get, getting coaches emails and reaching out to them directly. Um, so I just want to remind you, so next week you will be receiving your August newsletter in your email. And if you're looking for the orientation schedule, you'll find more information about how to get it there. So in the newsletter, there will be information about how there will be information about um, how to find and how to download the YAP app, which is where a lot of information for orientation will be, including the schedule, signups, things like that. So be sure to read your August newsletter, which you'll be receiving next Monday. Another uh, reminder that we have for you is to complete your strengths finder. So in your Bentley email, you've received uh, a link to complete bentley.gallup.edu. It's in your email. And um, please complete your strengths finder because there'll be a session on strengths. As Bentley is a strengths-based institution. And during your orientation, there'll be an awesome session to dive into it. And if you don't complete your strengths, then you won't be able to have your strengths. And it'll be less meaning for you, meaningful for you when we have the program at orientation. So if you guys have any more questions, we'll be around. Oh, one more question. Uh, we'll be around for the next 15, 20 minutes. Uh, you can just type in and we'll respond to you. So um, get ready for orientation. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Thanks.